Hello, everyone. Welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for tuning in. So welcome to your next installment of the Twin Flame Mirror Reading here on Divine Conversations. This um, was something that I wanted to do a while ago. However, um, my schedule just didn't allow it. And ultimately, that I've realized that that was actually very okay because, first of all, I am... <laughs> slowly but surely accepting the reality that i am in fact a leader a twin flame guide if you want to look at me that way um but i do i at least consider myself to be a twin flame reader because ultimately no matter what i do the messages for the collective always come out in my readings and i do daily readings now so if you're new to my channel welcome it's very very nice to meet you and if you're returning what's up y'all but i do daily readings um titled morning coffee and it's quite often that messages for the twin flame collective come out in morning coffee even though i do not specifically intend that to for, intend for that to happen um i just i i would much rather Make, put out the intention that you know the readings be for whomever needs them okay but quite often it's for the twin flame collective now i reinstated my twin flame mirror readings um and i did i believe i did one in november it is now december that i'm doing this next one and i'm realizing that because i did want to do it more often i was thinking maybe i should do it weekly again which is what i did when i first started my channel back in 2018 um, but my schedule just didn't allow it. And so I came to the realization that with all the readings that I do daily and all the messages that come through for the collective there, we should keep this twin flame mirror check-in or mirror reading to a once a month basis. So that's what I'm really going to continue to do. This is a spread that I developed myself in order to see how, what the current energetic state of the divine feminine and the divine masculine is and how they could potentially be mirroring each other or how they could be completely on other sides of you know other pages or other sides of the island i guess if you want to call it twin flame island right um so that's what we're going to be looking at here i have two decks this deck on the left uh well first of all well okay sorry i'm getting ahead of myself two decks first deck this deck on the left is going to be symbolizing the energies for the divine masculine collective this is the tarot apocalypsis deck and then on the right i have a deck that's going to symbolize the energies for the divine feminine collective which is and this is the tarot uh illuminati deck and these are I, I chose these two decks specifically because they are sister decks they are both created and developed by eric c dunn and kim hudgens yes so because of that because they're so closely related i decided to use these two decks also i really like them the imagery is fantastic and then i'm going to be closing the reading with oracle guidance from the sacred rebels last week or in the last reading i used the light worker oracle this time i'm using the oracle guidance from the sacred rebels because i was really feeling called to it so uh, so that i'm really going to allow that to happen we're going to just, just going to pull oracle guidance from different decks each time most likely that's kind of the intention it doesn't have to be that way there might be some repeat decks as long as as long as we get the correct message it really doesn't matter now keep in mind that the difference between my mirror readings now and the mirror readings that i did in the past or the mirror readings that you would get if you were to order a mirror reading for yourself as a personal reading is at the end of the of the um the reading the oracle guidance actually comes from the animal spirit deck in which i pull a relationship spread um that they in fact the wild unknown developed and put into their um animal spirit deck book um so for personal readings i will still be using the animal spirit spread but here for the channel i decided to go with something a little bit different and get my oracle guidance from something else which i find to be really really fun um also one last thing before we get started you might be hearing a bunch of construction in the background um if many of you have been following me you know that i live across the street from building 144 on my block um <laughs> which is really funny now for those of you that are not aware there's a number that is associated with the twin flame journey and that's 144,000. now there are some people out there that say that it's 
a number of the amount of twin flame individuals that have incarnated on the planet others say that it's actually a vibration it's the vibration of unconditional love however you see it however you describe it i personally don't really mind um i just know that that number is associated with the twin flame journey and if even if it is not just a vibration and it is actually an actual amount of people that have incarnated here as actual twin flames still 144,000 hertz is a number that is that resonates with unconditional love and that is the main part of this journey it is about reconnecting humanity with unconditional love from from source okay and reconnecting to source through unconditional love and the biggest part the most challenging part of this journey is being in is, is going through the process of uncovering your own inner core wounds that have separated you or kept you apart from in figuratively speaking that have put distance or disconnected you from the unconditional love of source and in going through that process of healing and awakening and becoming a more full and whole version of yourself than you were in the past and anchoring or embodying that unconditional love you then anchor that love into the collective consciousness and to the grid of the earth and that ultimately influences others to take advantage of that process and to start to resonate with unconditional love unconditional love is not may i repeat is not reserved for individuals on the twin flame journey however those who do truly resonate with the twin flame journey and who are tr who are truly twin flames who have come in with that template the embodying that template in this lifetime it is your responsibility to discover and embody unconditional love so that you can lead by example and provide a framework or maybe even a blueprint if you want to call it for the rest of humanity to start to connect with that energy okay so with all of that said i do have building 144 across the street from me and i actually moved last year i moved into a part of my apartment i changed rooms because one of my roommates moved out and i moved to the street side so now when i look out my window i see building 144. over the summer they demolished that building that building had actually been sitting vacant for ever since i moved in and i've been here for over two years now i moved in in august of 2017 and um that building had been sitting vacant the whole time and they tore it down over the summer and now it was oh my god you guys you're never going to believe this but i just remembered they tore the building down over the summer and they didn't start breaking ground on the building to start rebuilding until november 11th 11 11 guys and i can't believe i did not mention that to you i totally forgot about that you heard me correctly, y'all. They broke ground. They brought in a big old machine, a big old construction vehicle, and literally started digging up the earth to start laying the foundation on 11-11. Let that marinate. <laughs> anyway, you're going to hear, but you might hear a bunch of construction in the background because they're literally across the street jackhammering <laughs> right now. Okay, so and i you know what i'm just gonna take that instead of getting frustrated about it and being like raw i need perfect sound i'm actually going to i actually appreciate that and i think it's quite significant um they uh, that they're doing in this type of work that's so loud right now while i'm doing this reading it's very indicative of the construction that is happening within the twin flame community yes my sorry lips are chapped okay excellent so with all of that said let us settle in and get down to business yes all right here we go hi spirit please make me a clear channel for the twin flame collective at this time please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved please give us a clear and accurate representation of the energies of the divine masculine collective represented by the deck on the left and the divine feminine collective represented by the deck on the right please give us any sort of guidance that we need to hear at this moment and please show us how the twin flames 
are put, are mirroring each other or are maybe not mirroring each other at all. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, I'm going to start by shuffling the masculine collective's energies, and I'm going to give that five shuffles. One. Two. Three. For the Divine Masculine Collective. I'm seeing yellow for you, Divine Masculine. Four. Willpower, reasserting your will, realign, realigning your will in five with that of the divine will. And that, let me tell you guys, and I'm sure you know because you're living this, that is not easy. Boop. Okay, now guys, keep in mind that as I speak of divine masculine and divine feminine, I do not speak of gender. For the divine feminine, 11 11. Let's shuffle. Five shuffles here. Okay, as I speak of Divine Feminine and Divine Masculine, we are talking energy, not gender. So in my situation, I am in fact a gay man, and my twin is also male. He embodies the masculine energy. I embody the feminine energy. There can be two women. One embodies the masculine. One embodies the feminine. You, you could be a man and a woman. One embodies the masculine. One embodies the feminine. It could be a man and a woman, but the woman embodies the masculine energy and the, and the man body embodies the feminine energy. Yes? Okay. This is three. This is four. And this is five for the Divine Feminine Collective. All right. We're going to cut the deck and we're going to start with the feminine here. Boop. All right. Overall energy, we have the Emperor. Okay. Well, the first thing I heard with this card is the divine masculine has come back into the divine feminine's good graces um now the emperor does represent the divine masculine here in in this dynamic whereas the empress would represent the, the divine feminine and what i'm feeling with this is um regardless <laughs> I hear you, spirit. <laughs> Regardless of what your situation may look like right now on the surface, energetically speaking, the divine feminine is very much, and actually very physically speaking, but the divine feminine is very much focused on the masculine. She loves him. She wants to be with him. She wants this to work out. Um, but also the feminine is standing in her masculine power as well. Keep in mind that while, you know, one of us embodies more dominantly masculine energy and more dominantly feminine energy, we all still have masculine and feminine energy within. So the other thing that I'm getting here is even though, yes, the masculine may have come back into good graces, um, energetically, spiritually, with on behalf or, or, or when, it com in, when it comes to the divine feminine, he's back in the feminine's good graces to a certain extent. She's also standing her ground and standing in her power. And with this, ma with this emperor energy, she's setting very firm boundaries, very firm boundaries that the masculine must adhere to should he desire to come back into her life. This does not mean that... Um, She's looking to reject him, but this is coming from a place of unconditional love for the self, okay? Underneath the emperor, we have the seven of cups. Now, even though also, even though the masculine may have come back into the feminine's good graces, there's still a lot of confusion around. There's still a lot of what ifs, and this could be why, um, why the feminine is really trying to hold such strong boundaries. What I'm getting with the seven of cups here is that the feminine is very much questioning She's going through the process of allowing the masculine's energy back into her space, but she also has this questioning. It's like, well, what does this mean for us? What's going to happen? What, like, are, 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 I literally just heard, are you going to do me right this time? Or are we just going to get back to where we used to be in the toxic and narcissistic energies? Because she doesn't want to be anywhere near that. Come on, why won't you focus? Why won't you focus? 
Anyway, um, okay, well, it'll, uh, sorry guys, it'll come back into focus eventually. Underneath the Seven of Cups, you, ooh, yep, you've got the Seven of Swords. Oh my god, my camera is really like freaking the F out right now. It literally does not want to focus at all. Oh, this is terrible. Oh, this is terrible. Oh, this is just terrible. But you see, you know, this is pretty interesting because this card here is the Seven of Swords. Things are very, very unclear right now, okay? But what I also heard is with the Seven of Swords and the Seven of Cups, please focus. The Seven of Swords and the Seven of Cups, she's confusing herself is what I'm hearing. I'm sorry, sorry guys. I'm really doing everything I can to get this. There we go. Okay, there we go. That's better. She's doing everything that she can to try and figure this out. But what I'm also hearing is she's confusing herself and she's also deceiving herself in some ways. This also could be an energy of how the Divine Feminine may have been deceiving herself all along about about ooh, about how the divine masculine truly feels for her and so there also is a question here of like okay well how do you really feel about me what do you really think about me i may have had this this i may have been projecting this image of you but what image are you projecting of me underneath the seven of swords oh my god yeah underneath the seven of swords is the sun guys illumination is coming clarity is coming uh, what i really feel like here part of this energy of the divine masculine getting back into the divine feminine's good graces is the divine feminine starting to realize and starting to admit to herself how she may have been lying to herself how she how about how she feels for the divine masculine and how she may have been lying to herself or keeping up some sort of charade in terms of maybe even who her divine masculine truly is um but also his image who what he truly stands for and as as many of you all know already um since you've been following me for following me for so long and if you don't know you're about to find out but i am not the type of reader to completely disregard myself from these readings because i am in fact on this journey with you guys and i'm the type of person both as a reader and outside of outside of like my reading life just i'm that type of person who is not going to stand here and preach to you as if i haven't been through this situation in the past or i i'm i'm some sort of perfect person you know that doesn't ever make mistakes so i often share my experience to help you guys get some sort of perspective and i'm going to tell you guys right here right now i 100 percent resonate with this all of this all of this overall energy i recently came to a point where i had to admit my, admit to myself that yes i do in fact know who my divine masculine is because um you know certain elements about our connection and about the things that have happened between us or the things that happened between us when we were in the heat of the situation when we were still kind of in the same vicinity within each other when we were still crossing paths with each other because of the nature of all of that i put on this really strong ego mask and i was like this is wrong this person is not my twin um i don't love this person i never want to see this person again i think he's a toxic piece of shit i hate him blah 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 all that all of that crap right well uh, first of all <laughs> first of all i apologize for that because it, it it wasn't fair but also it wasn't true and yes, it came from a place of being very, very hurt. I understand that. And I, but I, I, but okay, so I get it. But I recently admitted to myself that I do in fact know who he is because spirit has never stopped. Spirit has never, ever stopped reminding me of this one person. I have not been able to, and you hear that horn in the background? That's confirmation. I have not been able to separate myself energetically from this individual. And the reason why I was in this energy, Seven of Cups, Seven of Swords, was because I still felt the connection and I was still extremely hurt by whatever happened. And I, so I, I had to admit to myself, I had to come down, come to terms with it and be like, I do know who my twin is and I do love him very, very much. And I would really, really like to be with him um, above all else if i had the choice to be with one person over the plethora of fish in the sea it would always be this person 
no matter what we have been through. But it took me a while to get to that place of realizing it and admitting it to myself again. Now, I say all that, but I want you guys to, re to, to understand that if you've been in that place too, it's because you've been hurt. I got a reading from someone who I highly recommend that you guys check out if you're interested in getting a reading about the situation. Her name is Nailea Guerrero. Her, uh, you spell it N-A-I-L-E-A, -E Nailea Guerrero, which is G-U-E-R-E-R-R-O, I believe. Please, Nailea, please forgive me if I butchered the spelling of your last name. But she did a reading for me that completely confirmed everything that I was feeling. And at that point, um, at that point, I really just had to sit down and say to myself, Eric, you know what's going on here. You know who this person is. Now, we haven't crossed paths. We haven't spoken to each other physically, verbally in over a year. But that doesn't matter because the connection is still there. And that pissed me off, guys. That pissed me the fuck off off i was like are you i why why am i so hung up on this one person but spirit answered that question for me daily <laughs> so okay so this is where the divine this is where the divine feminine is she is recognizing and realizing who her true it to who her true twin is who her true counterpart is and she's in the process of reaccepting that She's in the pro with the sun. She's in the process of pulling herself out of the illusions, pulling herself, pulling the mask off, not deceiving herself any longer. She's in the process of, uh, of clearing away the confusion, clearing away the clouds with the sun here. It's like, it's like when you have a storm and the storm passes through and then the sun comes out and burns all the clouds away. That's literally what's happening for the divine feminine collective right here, right now. Okay. Woo! We're off to a good start, y'all. So let's get into the rest of the situation here. For the Divine Feminine, first set of surrounding energies for you, my love. We have justice. Now, this justice feels like bringing, bringing balance in for her own self, being extremely truthful and honest with herself. Now, also, in being honest with yourself and bringing this balance into play, there's also this twinge of, yes, I know who my twin is, and yes, I love him or her very, very deeply, and yes, if we had the chance to come back together and be together, I would absolutely say yes, but there's also a little bit of, I'm kind of feeling a little bit of temperance energy here. We'll see if that comes out, but there's also a little bit of a balance in saying, but you know what, though? I recognize that it actually might also not happen. And I, I and and divine feminine, you have to be okay with that. Even though you love this person, and even though you would know you would rather be with them above all else, you have to release yourself from the attachment of being with them, because ultimately, okay, what I just heard is source will guide you to where you will need to be. Ultimately, okay. All right, justice is coupled with the two of pentacles, balance really about balancing the situation and you know i'm kind of feeling like this two of pentacles it's like w what the divine feminine right now is kind of currently facing is whether to be with her twin or not but that really all that really is hinging right now on whether the divine masculine is actually going to come forward or not and this is definitely for those of you that are in separation all right not gonna lie i mean if you're with your twin right now okay that's great so actually if you are in fact with your twin at this moment right now the divine feminine is very focused on creating balance and and clearing up any sort of misconceptions confusions or energies of lying to herself in terms of her relationship or situation <laughs> situationship i guess or this but mostly for those of you that are actually in union with your twin physically like you're actually physically with your twin you're in a relationship with your twin there's an energy of clearing up the confusion and the misconception that may have been getting in the way of your relationship with your divine masculine now if you are not with your twin if you are in fact in separation the divine feminine is in a current energy of saying look whatever happens happens Either I'm going to be with my twin or I'm going to be with somebody else. And part of what you might be dealing with right now is the emotional feelings of like, well, what happens if it isn't my twin? I mean, 
I guess, but you have, but in bringing that balance into your life and bringing that justice and that fairness into your life, you really have to let go of the attachment and you need to say to yourself, you need to work on cultivating the energy of if whomever I'm, I ultimately, whomever I'm aligned with is who the universe deems to be the right person for me at this time. So it's about cultivating the understanding and the, and being, being comfortable with the fact that you are open to being with your twin, but you are also open to being with, being with someone that is a better option at that time. Not to say that this person who is a better option is better than your twin. It's just for you at that moment, that is who justice or, oh, for some of you, that's who, that's who karma has allowed you, has aligned you with. So you, there might be some karmic relationships coming up for some of the twins, for some of the divine feminines here. But if there are karmic relationships coming up, then these karmic relationships are helping you heal something that ultimately could delete, could, could lead you right back to your twin flame, your divine masculine. Okay. Let's move forward. Second set of surrounding energies for the divine feminine here. We have the star wish fulfillment and healing. Mm, yes, for those of you that could be aligning with some sort of karmic relationship in the near future, uh, that, that relationship is definitely going to be healing something for you. But what the star is representing here is faith. There has been a new resurgence of faith here for the divine feminine. And if you really have, are in that energy of really f um, holding and anchoring and embodying faith in this circumstance, then I really do feel like you are okay with the idea of not necessarily having to be with your divine masculine. It doesn't mean you love him or her any less. It doesn't mean that you don't want to be with them. It just means that you're aligning with the right person for you. You're allowing, basically you're allowing the universe to play matchmaker because you are in fact holding your space and holding your own is what I heard actually and doing your work to better yourself. Okay. So, uh, I'm sorry, the star. First of all, I want to point out, well, this is actually 17, which would boil down to an eight, but it does have a seven in there and I'm seeing seven, seven, seven. So I wanted to point that out. That is luck. Um, and good fortune, uh, spirituality, awakening, awareness too. I just wanted to point that out. Okay. The star is coupled with, ooh, the knight of swords. I feel like this is the divine masculine energy who really wants to, he really wants to communicate guys. He or she really, really, really wants to communicate, really wants to come in at, almost even as your knight in shining armor swoop you off your feet, protect you, defend you. And I, and what I really feel here is the universe is asking you to have faith that this really is true, that this person, regardless of what they may be showing you or not showing you in the physical, this person really wants this, really wants to be, wants to ride in and just like swoop you off your feet or really wants to ride in and communicate with you. It feels quite aggressive, but it's only aggressive because it's quite pent up. I'm hearing the divine masculine has been wanting this for the long, for a long time. Also, th if you are in separation, things could happen very quickly. So in terms of that, the star represents wish fulfillment. If you are not in separation, if you are actually in physical union, if you're in a physical relationship with your twin flame, with your divine masculine, there are some conversations that need to be had in order to facilitate some sort of healing and ultimately facilitate some sort of expansion and growth. Keep in mind though, these conversations could be pretty heated. Okay. So just focus less on really how things are said, or maybe the intensity or the emotion, the intensity of the emotion of the situation, and instead focus on the healing that can be cultivated from whatever conversation that may be had. This, this relationship, this dynamic is not easy guys, it's not easy because you really have to face yourself here. Okay. I mean, you, you, and that's one of the hardest things you will ever have to do in life. Face yourself. Okay. I just heard the knight, the, the divine masculine is riding in as a knight in shining armor. Armor is meant to be and is intending to do so. Whether he follow throughs, follows through with this or not is up to his own free will. 
And you just have to accept that, Divine Feminine. I mean, it is what it is. All right? Your challenge, Divine Feminine, is at the current moment, ooh, the Hierophant commitment. Committing to this. Committing to this. And, and, and I, I t again, guys, I totally resonate with this because for the longest time, I was in an energy of, you know what? Fuck this. Fuck this. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing this with you. I am leaving this behind me and I am purposefully looking for someone else to align with. And the universe time and time again just brought me right back here. Now, what does committing to this mean? Committing to this means being okay with being on this journey and doing what it is you need to do to heal yourself, but also being okay with the fact that ultimately if it ends up not being your divine masculine that you align with right now right away at this moment maybe even at all that's okay but you need to commit to the situation you need to commit to the journey of loving yourself unconditionally which ultimately means that you love this other person your divine masculine unconditionally and unconditionally means regardless of the physical circumstances you have to commit to loving this person unconditionally. That's the point. You can't say that you love yourself unconditionally, but then hold uh, resentment and, and conditions for the love of your divine masculine. And divine masculine, it's the same for your feminine. Yes? The Hierophant is coupled with the queen, woo, the queen of swords yikes all right so check it out though there's another layer to this the, and the other layer to this is standing your ground against conformity standing your ground against the patriarchy standing your ground against situations that tend to devalue feminine energy and that includes your divine masculine do not give in to the situation if it is toxic and narcissistic if the individual is trying to control or manipulate you you have got to stand your ground from that you have got to place barriers not sorry i'm sorry not barriers boundaries specifically boundaries not barriers but the moment that this person tries to start controlling you you have got to let that go you have got to say no thank you i will go elsewhere and this isn't even an argue this isn't even a, a situation in which you would need to argue about it it's just simply laying down the law drawing that line and moving and moving on changing your focus and by moving on i mean just like going about your going about your business okay changing your focus elsewhere don't even give it any of your time or energy okay but also the queen of swords is saying to yourself, you have got to cut away all of the things that keep you from committing to this relationship or at least to this journey, to this path. Because no matter how much, look, fe divine feminine, no matter how much you resist, no matter how hard you kick and scream against it, you're not going to get off the path. It just isn't going to happen. You signed up for this. So you got to honor it, but honoring it means finding a way to love your divine masculine unconditionally, which means regardless of the physical circumstances, regardless of what this person may have said and done. That does not mean that if this person has done some real shitty things that you're just going to be like, oh, well, you know, whatever, and just forget it. No. Oh, absolutely not. But you can work towards forgiving in your own time and learning and finding a way to still love this person unconditionally. Because check it out, guys, no matter what has, has happened, even with the worst things possible, there is still a reason why this person has acted this way. And it has nothing to do with you. It's their own situation. They're coming from their own place of hurt. And that goes for everybody, even outside the twin flame relationship. Yes? Okay. Closing message or potential outcome for the divine feminine at the current moment? Oh, yes. The Ten of Cups. 
Now here, this is that embodiment of unconditional love. But quite frankly, you can read that however, as, as exactly as it looks. Divine wish fulfillment. This, this love coming together. This relationship coming together for you. For some of you, I am picking up that yes, there are going to need to be some pit stops along the way. And those pit stops could, could uh, manifest in the form of a karmic relationship. But ultimately, those karmic relationships are helping you clear away the cobwebs, clear away the baggage even. Okay? But ultimately, this is going to come together, Divine Feminine. And I'm, I'm hearing the masculine has his focus on you too. All right. Ten of Cups is coupled with oh, the chariot. You're moving very quickly towards this. Okay. You have that balance. You understand what it is you need to understand. And you move, I'm hearing you're moving forward quickly. Very quickly. Okay. Oh, oh, this is so beautiful. Oh my God. I am. Oh my God. I'm so glad I'm doing this reading. Okay. <sighs> Let's get into the divine masculine energies. Yes. Overall energy for you, divine masculine. You've got the page of wands. I love that. I love that. You know why? Because I see the page of wands as a minor arcana version of the hermit. And I do feel like you divine masculines, you have you've been dealing with the hermit energy for a long time it's almost as if the hermit energy has been staring you right in the face for e decades i'm hearing even eons yikes okay fine but you're at a point now where you've done enough soul searching at the moment for this cycle at least for you for you to start re-identifying yourself in the physical world. So why do I see the Page of Wands in this deck? In both of these decks, the pages are the princesses. But why do I see the Page of Wands as a minor arcana version of the of the Hermit? Well, the Hermit represents um, uh, going on a path of inner discovery, going deep, diving deep within yourself and discovering who you are on a soul level. You can see the Page of Wands as discovering yourself in the physical on a more personality base level it's not so deep it's more surface level um self-discovery uh new creative energy also the page of wands can represent messages a messenger so so while yes for the most part i feel like a lot of you divine masculines are really in the process of dev of, of redefining yourself in the physical realm also there is an energy of wanting to send a message to your divine feminine wanting to communicate with her or him, it doesn't matter. We're not talking gender, we're talking energy here, okay? Um, yeah, that's beautiful. That is so beautiful, okay? Underneath the page of wands, you have the six of pentacles. Wanting to give back the love that you have received. There has been a very strong lesson for you lately, Divine Masculine, in reciprocity. And that was one of the biggest things that that disconnected you or or ripped you away from your and uh, ripped you away physically from your divine feminine you two were never energetically never really disconnected but you were wrenched from each other in the physical realm but that's because of a lack of reciprocity and i'm really picking up mass divine masculine that you lately over the last i want to say six to eight months to maybe even a year you've been in the process of learning what it really means to have a reciprocal relationship what it really means maybe even to be emotionally available now this is pentacles it's not emotion it's not like cups which would really represent emotions but i am kind of getting that's what that's a layer of this lesson that you've been dealing with here and so now that you're in this energy of re-identifying yourself redefining your love so redefining yourself on the surface as uh, surface level and also wanting to send a message to your divine feminine wanting to communicate with her you're also wanting to give back the love that you've received from her okay Six of underneath the six of pentacles, you've got the six of swords. Oh my god, divine masculine, this is beautiful. Because what this is saying here is you're leaving you're leaving the past behind you. You're you're intending to leave the past behind you. You're in an energy of moving from rough waters to calmer waters. And I do see this six of swords as also a healing energy. Okay. Very interesting. So I'm seeing mirroring already for the twins. But hold on. What underneath the six of swords is the nine of cups. Wish fulfillment, satisfaction, 
I'm hearing satisfaction is guaranteed. Now, this card could also represent it overindulging indulgence. And if that is if that is resonating with you right now, it's like you want to indulge, you want to overindulge in the love and care and affection and passionate, maybe even sexual energy with your divine feminine. But also this nine of cups is assuring you that wishes are about to be fulfilled. And that's really as long as you continue to do the beautiful and, and really beneficial work that you've been doing. Okay, now the first layer of mirroring that I'm seeing here is the Divine Feminine has the Seven of Swords and the Seven of Cups. The Divine Masculine has the Six of Pentacles and the Six of Swords. Two sixes, two sevens. I mean, they're not, they're not the exact same cards or, 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 or numbers, but two six, two sevens. Okay, that's a little bit of mirroring there. Now also what I'm picking up here so far is that um, the divine feminine now and it's always kind of been this way but the divine feminine is really influencing the divine masculine the by by coming to terms with how she truly feels and what she truly wants out of this relationship okay Gosh, this is beautiful. All right, let's get into the rest of this for you, Divine Masculine. First set of surrounding energies for you, we have... Oh! The King of Cups. Mmm. Look, mm, that is just sexy. <laughs> sorry, guys. Well, you know what? I'm not sorry. That is fucking sexy. I mean, look at that. You know, there is nothing sexier, in my opinion, there is nothing sexier than a man or a masculine energy who is in touch with his emotions and isn't afraid to be in love, isn't afraid to show his love, isn't afraid to lead with his heart. And this doesn't even really come across as that ooey gooey gushy like like super sticky icky romantic love. This is like emotional maturity. It's like, no, I know who it is that I am. I know who it is that I want. I know what it is that I want. And I am not afraid to, to go get it. And I am not going to let you stop me from getting it. Because quite frankly, it ain't none of your goddamn business. <laughs> I know that's right, masculine. Now, if now now, this really feels like an energy of you stepping up, stepping to the plate. I'm hearing even making yourself known, being emotionally mature, having the emotional wherewithal to really stand up for yourself and what you believe in and what your heart truly desires, what you represent on a heart level, what it is you want out of love and out of life. And this really extends much further past this twin flame relationship this extends into all areas of your life so if you're not necessarily feeling this energy right now you're on your way there you're in the process of stepping up into this king of cups energy i will go so far as to say that this this is the current energetic state of the divine masculine collective and coming to terms with this Dealing with the fallout or the aftermath of you standing in this power. And let me tell you, that is not a bad thing. Because anything or anyone that falls out of your life as a result of you standing in this King of Cups energy is someone or something that should not be in your life to begin with. Point blank, period. I do kind of feel a little bit of a tower energy with this. But ultimately, it's a good thing. The King of Cups is coupled with... Ooh, the Three of Cups. Now, the Three of Cups is giving me an energy of, in this moment, is giving me an energy of reunion and celebration. So, right currently, the Divine Masculine, whether you are with your Divine Masculine or not, the current energy of the Divine Masculine Collective is wanting to celebrate this union between the Masculine and the Feminine regardless of the circumstances and regardless of what the past may have been between the two of you. I really like, look, the look divine feminine, the divine masculine is really stepping up to the plate here, really stepping up to the plate and really wants to celebrate his union with you. It's, it's like, I'm getting an energy of like almost wanting to show you off. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'm hearing things like wanting to parade you around the room, being like, yeah, this is, this is, this is my feminine. See that? You see that over there? That's my feminine. She's mine, and I love her. I might start crying. <laughs> um, 
Wow. <laughs> Woo! Okay. Let's move forward. Second set of surrounding energies for you, the divine masculine. The four... Oh, man. The four of wands. <laughs> um... I might have to pause the video. I might have to pause the video, but union energies. The four of wands is actually one of the original, one of the first cards of you that symbolizes uh, the twin flame union because of those, those four wands can be seen as the 1111, which is a, um, which is a, a number that is directly connected to the twin flame situation. Um, so the, the, the masculine wants union. The masculine, I'm, I'm, and I'm seeing a home. It's like the, the masculine wants like to move in, wants you two to like get together and like start making plans to move in with each other if you haven't done so already, or wants to start nesting, wants to start building a home for you. The masculine may even be in an energy of starting to build some sort of finances or, or work on their career in order to provide a safe and stable and solid home for the two of you to live in. And if you guys are already in this situation, then that's just the, the masculine is really focused on making sure that you guys have this space. Wow. Four of Wands is coupled with the Ace of Pentacles. Oh, man, this is some beautiful energy, guys. Um... <laughs> so what I heard with this was the, the masculine wants to propose to you. The masculine wants to provide to you some, and, and, and look, Divine Feminine, this is something that you really need to hear because the masculine collective has been in an energy of, um, of really focusing on finances and career. And a very common misconception that the Divine Feminine has been holding is that, oh, all he cares about is money. All he cares about is fame. All he cares about is riches. All he cares about is status and, and opulence and blah, blah, blah. No. That's actually very, very false. The reason why the Divine Masculine has been so focused on his money and his career is because he wants to be able to provide you, the both of you, with a stable grounded space to do your work to live your lives oh boy yowza yowza okay all right cool so masculine your current challenge you have the ace of wands well first of all Y'all know what this could really mean. I mean, and I, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Sexual energy has been really high between the twins lately. But your challenge also, Divine Masculine, um, is <laughs> to stop fantasizing about it and really start doing it. it the, the, the challenge here for you is to act on what you're inspired towards. Now, this is not to say that you're being rushed into this. In no way are you being rushed into this. Into this. And even though we have all of this beautiful energy for you, all we have all this emotional maturity that you're coming into, you're having you 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 you're wanting to provide the stable foundation. There is still a little bit of resistance that's holding you back from actually taking full advantage of the inspira in the inspir inspired action that you're 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 guided towards okay for some of you this resistance is how do i make this happen especially with the queen of swords up here for the divine feminine many of the divine feminine are still kind of in this queen of swords energy um and for some of you that is uh, especially coupled with this hierophant that is rep that is manifesting as a complete rejection of the status quo, a complete rejection of the norm, a complete rejection of anything that is not balanced between masculine and feminine energy, which would mean a complete rejection of the patriarchy. So for some of you divine masculines out there, you are needing to rearrange your life so that you can have a situation or a circumstance that is balanced and harmonious and is nurturing of both the masculine and the feminine energy that could also be some of this inspiration that you're being challenged by right now how do i create that space for us to flourish in this is a good challenge to have though 
because it's only going to benefit the both of you. Yes? Ace of Wands is coupled with the All Gifted. This is a unique card in this deck. The All Gifted is depicted as Pandora and her box. Um, so, and it represents um, being willing and able to share your gifts with the world. So, this actually is very, is very, very much connected to this Page of Wands or Princess of Wands energy in rediscovering yourself or maybe even re-identifying yourself in the physical realm. A lot of the masculines right now are being challenged with really stepping into their true authenticity, however that would look like for him or, or her, right? Not being afraid to, to show the true self is what I'm hearing. And you know what, though? Even though, even though this is, this is, such a challenging thing and for me look for me <laughs> growing up as a black effeminate gay man in suburbia <laughs> no less that was a really huge challenge for me huge like astronomical but i got there i did it and i will tell you something i will never going back go back to being anything less than i who i truly am so even though this is so challenging, this is also a really good challenge to have. And I think some of you masculines, I think you're starting to recognize that, which is only starting to drive you forward more, which is only wanting to make you overcome this challenge that much more, especially since you're coming into the energy with this King of Cups energy of knowing that you absolutely can do this and almost being proud of yourself for having this opportunity to really show the world what you're truly made of and what we're all really capable of. Because that's really also part of what the Twin Flame journey is. Re reconnecting us to our, to source, to our power, to who we truly are, right? Awesome. Closing message or potential outcome for you, Divine Masculine. The Fool. Taking that leap of faith, doing the damn thing, following your heart, doing what you know is right for you and for your twin, right? Potential out, closing message or uh, damn, yeah, potential outcome, taking the leap of faith, stepping forward, doing what is right for you, masculine, not what patriarchy or everyone else is telling you around you, you need to do. <laughs> The Fool is coupled with, oh, mm, the King of Wands. Now, this is another depiction of the Divine Masculine um, in this journey. So the Divine Masculine can either be, de the Divine Masculine can either be depicted as the Emperor, the Divine or and the Divine Feminine can be depicted as the Empress, or they can be depicted as the King of Wands and the King of, I'm sorry, and the Queen of Wands. Um... And that's mainly because of the spiritual nature that the wands suit represents, okay? But what this also is saying here is the potential outcome for the Divine Masculine Collective right now is showing up, stepping up to the plate, going after what it is he or she wants, and not giving a damn, not giving a flying fuck what anyone else has to say about it. Because that's the energy that the King of Wands and Queen of Wands embodies. He knows exactly what he wants, and he's not afraid to go after it. And he really doesn't care what you think, because it's none of your business anyway, is it? But now the, here's the other thing about the King of Wands: he's not afraid to bide his time, to sit back and watch patiently, and wait for the right time to strike. So that's also currently what the Divine Masculine is doing. Okay. Y'all, I am going to go ahead and just declare that this is the absolute best Twin Flame reading I have ever done on my channel. Ever. And I have only... Well, no. Have I... Uh, I mean, I was going to say I've only cried once on the channel. And that was for the Sagittarius reading in August. There may have been another time. But that right there... That King of Wands and the Three of Cups, that shit almost broke me in a million pieces. <laughs> I 
I really had to pull it together for that. That was a be- that was such a beautiful message. Such a beautiful message. All right, guys. So now I'm going to close out this reading with our oracle guidance from the Sacred Rebels. Wow. Yo, congratulations. Kudos to you, Divine Masculine, because you have really come so far. So far. You have come so far. (laughs) I don't know what else to say. Like, I'm really proud of you, and I'm really proud to deliver this message for you because you have made some serious progress, my friend. (laughs) And if you're, and if, and if you're not totally here but you still kind of resonate with this please know for a fact that you are absolutely on your way to this absolutely so please just keep on doing what you're doing boo because it's working i mean that's quite obvious oh shit okay I'm, (laughs) i'm gonna give this one more shuffle and then we will see what we've got for our twin flame collective Okay, well, we are going to take both of these. And I'm going to do my best to not make this too long because we're almost over, almost at an hour here. So, we, wow, we've got card number 13, which boils down to a four. Also, 13 is a number of change and death, transformation, power of attraction. And do you see, do you see the depiction of the divine masculine and the divine feminine on this card here? I would say this is definitely a twin flame card. Just by the imagery. I don't know. I haven't read the definition yet. I've actually, these two cards that have come out here, I haven't pulled very often. So I'm really not familiar with the definitions here. But this, I mean, look, I mean, come on, guys. It's divine masculine and divine feminine right there. Yes. And then you also have card number 37. Focus on the light. And already the message here is you have just got to focus on purely nothing else but the light of source. Because that is going to get you everywhere that you need to go. Do not waste your time or energy focusing on the bullshit. Especially you, feminine. Look at this. Seven of swords, seven of cups. Don't you dare spend any, waste any of your time any longer focusing on all the shit. Okay? Yes, that was a message for myself, too. Boop. <laughs> okay. Card number 13. Ooh, you know what? There is really no... I'm not even going to try and paraphrase this. So this this is probably going to take a minute. Because some of these definitions in this deck can be a little long. Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> card number 37, focus on the light. That's... That's three whole pages. All right, but we're going to read them because it's necessary. So buckle up, kids. Get comfy. You want to pause the reading and grab yourself like a drink or, you know, a refresher or something like that. Go use the bathroom. Go ahead. All right, because we're diving in. Okay. Card number 13, power of attraction. There is such wonder awaiting you. There are so many beautiful adventures and so much magic yet to be. Can you keep your heart open to what is coming towards you without surrendering your experience of this moment by becoming too future-oriented? You see, there is magic in this moment too. There is something arising within you, out of the depths of your being. In this process, there is a shift in environment, both internal and external. A fertility is being stimulated. This is your time to play with that fertility, to conceive Create and embark upon the process of transformation with an open heart and mind. You may know where it is all going to lead. I'm sorry, you may not know where it is all going to lead. All you need to know is that it will be wonderful and exactly, perfectly what is needed. Beyond that, allow the energy of fertile growth and abundance that now flows so naturally and richly within you and around you simply to be. You are a big soul, and with that often comes big dreams. You might worry that you want too much out of life. Perhaps you think that you are only capable of small dreams. You, If you have drawn the 
the oracle of big bold vision as well which we haven't then this part of the message is highlighted for you this oracle is guiding you to remember that there are stages of creation a house cannot be built without the flooring no matter how beautiful the stained glass windows you plan to install are the walls need to be up first your big life dreams are a work in progress just like you if you have been working on healing something within you, starting a new creative project, or just taking on a new job or relationship and feel that although you are getting some results, you are important, or you are impatient for more, doubt that you can continue or ever find the quote zone or become proficient in the situation at hand, then this oracle comes as reinforcement. You are doing well. That which is worthwhile takes time to build. Create each success, even the small ones. You are creating something of worth. Be patient, keep going, and trust. This oracle comes with a special message. You have recently completed a cycle or level of manifestation and are transitioning into the next level of experience. Like a big fish leaving the small pond and feeling like a rather small fish in a bigger pond, there will be some, quote, getting used to it time needed as you find your way. I actually have been describing that lately as the energy of the page of pentacles, right? Of having a level up and now needing to find your footing, but that's exactly what this is. So, okay, cool. This will add to what you have already done and bring valuable expansion to your realization of your abilities, as well as many new relationships and opportunities to help you go further on your journey. What you are in process of creating will benefit from this stage of your process. Whether your creation is simply your sacred life path, a particular creative work, uh, or an actual child, there is a positive and constructive energy that is unfolding for you now to boost this process and carry you further along the way. Do you dare to dream and do you believe in your dream until it manifests? Even if naysayers challenge you? Of course you do, sacred rebel. This oracle brings you guidance. You are going to attract whatever is needed to complete your work in progress and bring it to fruition. Remain open to receive and trust in the unfolding of your life experiences. Do not turn away. All of the necessary elements are coming together. Allow this integration to occur so that you can manifest your dreams. Ugh. Also, I want to keep I want you guys to be aware. I don't know if you can hear it, but I'm still trying to keep myself from breaking down in tears right now. <laughs> okay, let's get to the next card, which is card number 37, which boils down to a 10, which is a completion, guys. Okay, here we go. Card number 37. Focus on the light. A tremendous force of light is gathering around you. It is attracted to the purity of your intention to create from your heart. As your intention grows, so does the light. As the light grows, so does your intention. Magic wants to happen for you now. The synchronicity, perfect timing, opportunities, and information that are needed will seem to be drawn right to your door. You may start to feel as if you cannot walk outside without stumbling into something helpful, wonderful, and inspiring. You might be startled as this interplay of light with your heart evokes many new successes and attracts an abundance of opportunities your way. You may need to adjust as the field of light grows stronger and its effects become more palpable. It may bring rather dramatic improvements into your world. You may be uncomfortable or feel out of your depth with these changes. This would be understandable, but it would be a shame for you to hold on to that resistance for anything more than a brief moment. Any resistance or fear will inhibit the continuing free flow of the light so that it can manifest its beauty through you in the physical world where it is needed. It is best to stay focused on your pure heart and intentions. Just allow all these to happen of its own accord without making it mean anything too personal. Simply let it be the workings of the great light of love flowing through a pure heart and touching the world. Even if the light that is drawn to you and flows through you has some dazzling effects, you don't have to get caught up in it. Doing so might start you worrying that you are unworthy or that you are unable to keep up. 
This worry will constrict possibilities rather than allowing the free flow of light. You have permission simply to be appreciative of the light and to enjoy it in you as you continue to focus on what really matters, the pure intention of your heart and your desire to create. If you are not sure what this means or how it would look on a practical level, consider this example. A service-oriented business becomes very successful financially and gains considerable commercial power, which can be used to help promote its message or assist other organizations in gaining exposure to the public. Of course, that power could be used in less pure ways, such as, a boosting such as boosting personal ego rather than promoting the agenda of the heart. Power games and politics might start erupting as the people grab for their share and suddenly the purity of the project begins to crumble. Sometimes success can be like a powerful mirror and a shining searchlight as it shows up what is already within someone or a group of people. Under the spotlight of success, it is more intense, amplified, and obvious. This can give an opportunity to sow the seeds of our own destruction or to work on what arises from a heart-centered perspective to create a firmer foundation that supports even greater attainment. How would that work in this example? By returning attention to the heart of why the business was started in the first place. It is wise to maintain focus on a pure, original motivation for the work rather than shifting course to fo focus on money or influence. The latter are not bad per se, but they are rather a rather different vibration, focused on, a, on personal gain rather than heart-centered contribution. When focus shifts from the heart, the underlying energy of any creative project can become contaminated with lower vibrational forces such as fear, which is behind greed, for example. If this is not rectified, the business or creative project will begin to change. It will lose the luster of its original purpose that made it so attractive and magnetic to the light. It continued, I'm sorry, its continued ability to grow as a light in the world is diminished. It may end up becoming another corporate machine, successful according to more conventional measures, or not. The genuine heart-centered success that creates a win-win field of energy for all involved can only be attained, nurtured, and expanded when those creating the project or business remain focused on the purity of their original intentions. This oracle brings an assurance, assurance of success of the highest order, not just commercially, but from the heart. It will manifest as a highly valuable offering to the world. This applies to a project, endeavor, or organization in which you are involved. Your heart will help you realize which group or project it applies to. It may be more than one. However, you must stay focused. Enjoy the glittering lights of success, but don't be distracted by them. Stay on point with what you want to create and why. Stay true to yourself. This oracle also brings another message. Don't be distracted by other paths around you at this time as you are too close to succeeding on the one you're on now. Diluting your energies in the pursuit of too much will slow down your success and the world needs your light to shine sooner rather than later. In time, you may diversify and explore other ways to express yourself, but for now, Build what you are working on and know that success is coming swiftly. Wow. This is a fantastic reading. And there's one thing that Spirit is reminding me of that I was picking up before that I didn't say earlier. On behalf of the Divine Masculine, for the Four of Wands and the Ace of Pentacles, this, this Ace of Pentacles absolutely looks like a ring to me. I'm seeing a marriage proposal with this. Four of Wands, Ace of Pentacles. So, boop, there's that. Okay. There you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you're still here one hour and nine and a half minutes later, I really, truly appreciate your time and attention. And I want to let you guys know that I love you all so very much, especially you. And I hope you guys have a fantastic month. Um, 
a very happy holidays and uh, a very happy new year. Yeah, because 2020 is coming, guys, and it's going to be a big year. It's going to be a very, very big year for all of us, whether you're a twin flame or not. It's going to be a huge energetic shift. Okay, I love you guys, and I look forward to our next mirror reading next month. Yeah, take care. Mwah! Bye.